Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from ESPN Central Texas. Thank you for making Locked On Big 12 your first listen every single day. Look, I, I think back to the big moments. I, I love to be positive. I love to be positive. And I think back to the big moments of Kansas beating Oklahoma and, and Texas losing to OU and the thoughts of maybe we could get Texas and OU out of the conference championship picture but to be honest with you, after this weekend, it wasn't good. But let's be objective. We go back to the first two, three weeks of Big 12 play. We all thought this is bad. There was one source, one Big 12 source who said maybe Big 12 football is OK. Maybe everybody else is, is overreacting. And that was incorrect. The reaction at the time in the first two weeks was this league is full of parity. That was the consensus. And it's still the truth. As we see teams like West Virginia, Kansas fall out of grace, out of the picture, likely not right there for a conference championship that we expected to be that way a couple of weeks ago. We now turn our attention to teams like Oklahoma State still, still, despite the loss, to Iowa State still with the win at BYU. With Kansas State, who now, after the blowout over Baylor, seems like it's peaking at the right time. But here's the problem. Texas is in. There, there's no way at this point that we can keep Texas out of the Big 12 championship. We're, we're going to talk Big 12 championship over the course of today's show. Look, emergency podcast. I'll, I'll peel back the curtain a bit, too. My voice, gone. I've stayed up until midnight central time to watch Iowa State and BYU duke it out. Am I happy about that? No, I, I think the scheduling's terrible. Am I happy that BYU in a night game where I thought, you know what, BYU plays well in a night game, would be that piss poor to drive me to this time at night, to this time, this late? Like I get it, I'm 22, right? I should be able to withstand this. But if you stayed up for this, it's, you're a maniac. But I'm watching a backup quarterback of BYU that Iowa State puts its backup backup in from bum whatever Iowa, right? That that's the situation. That's the energy I'm working off of. And, and usually, I try to give you a case in which Texas and OU don't make the Big Twelve championship. But now, after this weekend, with a worst case scenario, we are working our way toward Texas and OU in a Red River rematch. Now, look, I'll talk second segment about how to keep Texas and OU out. I will. I'll give it to you. But for now, as we recap, let's talk things that didn't go well. Texas over TCU, 29-26. The Horn Frogs cover. You score 20 points in the fourth quarter. But in Quinn Ewer's return, you just didn't have enough. I thought Imani Bailey was valiant. Was he elite? No. Valiant. Josh Hoover, same thing. Valiant. Was he elite? The best performance I've seen? No. But 24 for 36, 300 yards, two touchdowns. Valiant. As I watched the game, I thought TCU, Savion Williams had a shot at the end, and they, and they did. You just got to stop Texas. And you couldn't do it. That, that's what I need. I needed that level of parity of the Big 12 to affect Texas and OU. Take you from Texas and TCU to the rest of the league, Oklahoma, West Virginia. I, I've said it all week long. West Virginia can do the same thing Oklahoma State did. Solid defense. Strong running game. Okay, quarterback that doesn't make too many bad mistakes. And I was wrong. 59 points for you. 59 points. Dylan Gabriel, 23 for 36. Not only did he have a good game, 423 yards, five touchdowns. I mean, made the West Virginia defense look like one of the worst in the Big 12. And then defensively, Oklahoma was unbelievable. Gary Green going 10 for 27, 154 yards, two touchdowns, and interception. C.J. Donaldson and Jaheim White being held for 
less than 110 yards combined on just 23 carries. They could only get 23 carries because Oklahoma was ahead so far of West Virginia. Now, look, and again, I'm going to pull it back a bit, give you some real stuff. I've been sick the last 48 hours. My voice is gone. I have not been tip top shape peak of where I need to be. But I'm right here with you because I'm so fired up about how bad some of the contenders in the Big 12 were. That goes for you, Kansas, 16 to 13. All thir- You waited to the fourth quarter to score all 13 of your points. The reason I'm mad at Kansas is because I'm also mad at Texas Tech. 16 points? When Kansas has a backup quarterback for a majority of the game, not just the backup, the backup to the backup for the majority of this game. And you can only put up 16 points, your offense, knowing that Kansas is handicapped on that side of the ball. Can I put a point? Look, we'll laud Joey McGuire. We will praise Joey McGuire for his clock management at the end of the game and Baron Morton setting it up, winning 16-13 on a last-second field goal. But let's be honest, Texas Tech, it should have been a 35-7 to game, a 35-14 to game. Not a 16-13 to finish. Zach Kitley, you need to answer some questions. Even in a win, you need to answer some questions. Speaking of answering questions, guys, the reason I'm upset is because we had it. We had the opportunity for Oklahoma State to be squarely in to find its way to a Big 12 championship game, keep Texas and OU out. All you got to do is win a very winnable game against, o- against UCF. And for Oklahoma State, who's now 7-3, and three, that's not bad. 5-2 and two in Big 12 play, pff, that looks great. You just lost to a team that's now 5-5, five 2-5 and 2-5 five, and five in Big 12, and not just lost, but 45-3. Had you told me the game would be a monsoon, the game would be a monsoon, I would think, yeah, Oklahoma State has Ollie Gordon, the best running back in the Big 12. They don't need anybody else. They don't need R.J. Harvey. They don't need John Rice Plumley. They need nothing. A monsoon? Fine. Give me Oklahoma State. No. John Rice Plumley passing on 11 completions for 299 yards and three touchdowns. R.J. Harvey running the ball for 206 yards. Ollie Gordon, 25 yards. That's it. Alan Bowman, 19 for 36. That's it. Three interceptions showing that he's not Big 12 caliber yet. That is what is ang- just. I think anger is the right word. I think anger is the right word for this week in the Big 12. You didn't do what I expected. You didn't do what I was ready for to keep Texas and OU out of the conference title race. Does that make me petty? Let's find out. This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is where I go to make money every single week. At prizepicks.com, you can go and pick two, you can parlay two things. Pick two players, two props, NCAA, NBA, NFL, two props, and turn $10 into 250 bucks. Now look, I went very recently, LeBron James, Travis Kelsey, a combo, a special pick, three pointers and 10 and a half points on the receptions. Well, I say that for, for points for Travis Kelsey, 10 and a half points for Travis Kelsey receptions plus a score. It hit. Want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill, comedian Andrew Schultz. You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries for some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Prize Picks offers reboot policy. If your player gets hurt in, the, hurt in the first half, they can completely reboot. That's right. Even if one of your players is out in the first half, they are rebooted. Prize Picks, the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Prize Picks, go there today. PrizePicks.com forward slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. PrizePicks.com forward slash locked on college for a match up to $100 at 
prize picks. I am so enamored with the idea of keeping Texas and Oklahoma out of the Big 12 championship. Now, I told you earlier, I have been sick, sick as a dog for 28, 28, 38, 48, even 48 hours. And I'm trying to figure out how to make sure Texas and OU don't go to the Big 12 championship game. Well, now, having understood that there's a three, four, four way tie for second place in the Big 12, listen to this. Kansas State has lost to Oklahoma State. That's good, right? Oklahoma has also lost to Oklahoma State. That's good, right? So Oklahoma State should go to the Big 12 championship. Well, Iowa State beat Oklahoma State. Hmm. Interesting. Iowa State lost to Oklahoma. Interesting. Iowa State at five and two, six and four overall is bull bound, but at five and two, having just beaten BYU and knowing that they beat Oklahoma State, they should go to the Big 12 championship over Oklahoma State, right? No. Because they beat because they because they beat Oklahoma State. But wait a second, wait a second. Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma. Should they they should go to the Big 12 championship over Oklahoma, right? Yes. But wait, but wait. Iowa State beat Oklahoma State. We are in that dreaded scenario that I already brought up last week. It's the tiebreaker scenario. Because you have Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Iowa State, and Kansas State all tied at five and two. Let's just take one moment. If we're considering leaving Texas and OU out of the Big 12 championship, then we need to take care of business. It's about taking care of business. I am so fired up on this very topic because I know that Oklahoma State had every, every opportunity to beat UCF this weekend. I know that Oklahoma State, this team, shouldn't go into Orlando, Florida and lose that way, right? The parity of the Big 12 is crazy. But it is mind-boggling, mind-boggling that Oklahoma State could lose to that level. 45-3. to What are we doing? Not only did you lose 45-3, you didn't score in the first half. It took a late score, a a third-quarter score to even get you on the board to not be shut out. The monsoon, an excuse. Sure, you should have, you do have, statistically this season, the better running game than UCF. Instead, John Rice Plumlee's three touchdowns, RJ Harvey's three touchdowns, shone through in a win for for, for Central Florida that was so dramatic, their backup quarterback, Timmy McLean, got to effectively go in without issue. I don't... 19 passes is all it took for Oklahoma State to lose to UCF. UCF, the Knights threw... 19 passes. So, can we still keep Texas and Oklahoma out of the Big 12 championship? Well, look, this was a big game to say no. This was the big game to say Oklahoma can stay out. Oklahoma State, congrats, you punch your ticket. I, I posted a video last week and said, Oklahoma State, congratulations, you're in. And now, with Houston up next on the road. And then BYU, again, you should win those games, but you should win the game against UCF. Not only did you not win, you lost 45-3. to Oh, look again, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't have to do the emergency podcast thing, right? That is a an addition to the job when need be. When I feel like, you know what? It was such a wild week, such a wild week in conference play that we need a, a an extra podcast. And this week, the fact that Oklahoma State did what it did, I thought, you know what? Gosh, dang it. I got to come back. I, I got to give you the extra. I got to give you the juice that keeps Oklahoma and Oklahoma State out because there's not a lot of it. So now our wish becomes for Texas, for for Oklahoma and Texas to keep them out. Our wish becomes for Texas to effectively lose two games. Because if they're tied with everybody else, there's a real shot they get in. Iowa State, you look great. The win at BYU looks great. Now you get Texas at home. I can tell you how it's going to go, guys. I can tell you how it's going to go. Iowa State's going to be favored by 10, 12, favored, underdogs by 10, 12, Texas favored, on the road, 
everybody counting out the Longhorns. And at some point this week, I'm going to have to start talking about Steve Sarkeesian's team being legit. Steve Sarkeesian's team being right there in the thick, not just the thick, but at the forefront of the Big 12. The national analysts are already talking about it, and they're right. Texas in the middle of this. So let's consider them in, right? Now what? If Texas is the team, not Oklahoma State, who's in the Big 12 championship, no matter the line against Iowa State, no matter the win, they're still right there, squarely right there. Now what? We really need Oklahoma to lose. We the, the fact that Oklahoma's blown out so many teams, their, their losses have been by one score or less. We need them to lose at 11 a.m. against BYU, and they're not going to. We need them to lose to TCU at home at 11 a.m., and they're not going to. Sadly, we are looking right down, unless something crazy happens. We need the tiebreaker to work in our favor. We're looking right down Texas and OU in the Big 12 championship. Oh, the new guys. Who's the bust of the new teams? Who do we what do we do with this? What do you do? What do we do with the new four? This Lockdown Big 12, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Athletic Brewing Company near beer is where I go to drink all day, every day. Their non-alcoholic beers are spectacular. They keep my throat dry when I'm having a sore throat, a bad day. My voice is not there. Athletic Brewing Company is. It's time for a game changer at Athletic Brewing Company. And they have over 30 unique and custom craft beers for you. Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. 50 styles of craft to be total. Non-alcoholic. 50 styles of craft in total. Non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, Goldens, Sours, and more. My favorite is the Sours, and I could go to HEB, my favorite grocery store, pick them up, go home, we're good. First time customers, you code locked on. Use code locked on to get 15% off your first online order. Locked on. 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Athleticbrewing.com. Near beer. Exclusions apply. Conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company. Fit for all times. All right. Who is the bust of the new teams at this point? I've talked all year about Houston being so bad and how Houston needs help. And Houston is at the bottom of the barrel and they just can't put it together. And, and now BYU, who was the darling BYU was the darling, right? They were supposed to be so good. And, and what if UCF makes a run under Gus Malzahn, who's been power five before. And what if of Cincinnati, UCF, BYU and Houston, one of these teams can go bowling. Well, now, it looks like none of them will go bowling. I know there are two games left for Houston. Houston still has a shot. Oklahoma State and UCF. They might, might be favored in one of those games. For BYU, their schedule includes Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, a couple of top 25 teams. That's not good. For UCF, hey, you just got a big win, right? At Texas Tech, at home against Houston. You'd be okay to win one of those games, get bowl eligible. There's a shot you win one of those games. And then Cincinnati at three and seven, already out of bowl contention, but just coming off a 24 14 win against Houston. Brother, what? I, I, I wonder, I wonder the, the chaos of the Big 12, how much do we factor that into these new teams struggling in their first year in league play? How these these four new teams have not been able to put it together so far. How they have been behind the punch so far. It makes me wonder how much of this litmus, litmus test should we really take into, into consideration. And I think it varies. We have to go school by school to determine how we look at these four teams. Again, if you're just joining, I've been stupid sick for 48 hours but had to do an emergency podcast after Cincinnati 
beat Houston and UCF beat Oklahoma State. While I once thought that, that BYU was the most ready for Big 12 competition, I, I viewed them very differently the last few weeks. 35-6, to six, a loss to Texas. 37-7 to West Virginia. 45-13 to Iowa State. That, if you're keeping score at home, that is 26 points in three weeks. Not in one game, in three weeks for BYU. That is bad. At home, at night, 45-13. For UCF, kind of the opposite trajectory. 45-3 to after a two-point victory on the road against Cincinnati. 45-3 to against Oklahoma State. They dominated home territory. What if they are the... Are the team of the future in the Big 12? What if that's the case? I'm I, I impressed what they did. Then for Cincinnati, brother, three and seven, one and six, but you just got a win in Big 12. Your first win, everybody gets a win in Big 12. Play all the new teams. This one comes on the road. It's a Houston team that just won against an original Big 12 team in Baylor. 24-14 final, Bearcats on top. So now, if we think, who's the doormat? Who's the bust of the new teams? Question becomes, is it everybody? Is everybody so below average or mediocre that none of this first season matters? How much should we buy into the hype for BYU, who has the facilities, who has the brand, who has the opportunity to win down the stretch? How much? She would buy into Kalani Sataki. How much? Scott Satterfield fired? Do we talk about that, right? I <coughs> I <coughs> I almost posed this question to you. How much do I value what these four teams have done in Big 12 play? And how much goes into next season? That we, that we then talk about it there. We decide there what matters with these four schools. Because right now, in the battle of the busts or the booms and the new big four, I, not only do I not know, I'm perplexed. Is, is BYU the team of the future? Is Cincinnati the team of the future? Is, is, is it UCF or Houston? What seemed like a BYU runaway four or five weeks ago has tightened. The gap has tightened. And I tell you what, this sickness, this cold that I have is tightened. It's a tightened cold. This has been it always will be. I'm getting out of here. Locked on. I love talking to you guys. Hopefully I'm better by tomorrow. Thanks for making Locked On Big 12 your first listen every single day. Dos grande. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Sorry.